What every woman should know about breast cancer, tonight on Nightcast. On the second day of the ground war, Saddam Hussein orders a withdrawal of his troops, but first he gets revenge. 12 Americans killed, 40 are missing in a Scud missile attack. This is NBC Nightly News with Tom Brokaw. Tonight, America at war. Reporting from Saudi Arabia, Tom Brokaw with Jane Pauley in New York. Good evening from Saudi Arabia. It is a night of desperation from Baghdad, a night of triumph for Operation Desert Storm in Kuwait and Iraq. And here in Saudi Arabia, it is a night of tragedy for 12 American Army reservists killed in a Scud missile attack, and 40 others are missing. That Scud missile attack came about five hours before Saddam Hussein announced on Baghdad radio that he was prepared to withdraw his troops from Kuwait under the provisions of the Soviet peace plan. Will that fly with the American military command and with President Bush? Standing by now at the White House, NBC's John Cochran at the Pentagon, Fred Francis. Fred, if they begin the withdrawal, will they have safe passage? No, they will not have safe passage, Tom. Under previously uh, dictated policy by this administration, they have to leave their equipment in place at this point if they want to withdraw. One senior official told NBC News a short time ago, remember Kafchi. In Kafchi, that battle for the coastal city, Tom, the, uh, the Iraqi tanks came in with their turrets turned backwards, the, the universal signal uh, for, for withdrawal or retreat or surrender, and uh, they turned around and fired. So any tanks moving north are going to move north into more than 100,000 American and allied troops because that is a roughly the number which is take, who have taken up positions in southern Iraq. As a matter of fact, Tom, American and allied troops are within 150 miles of Baghdad. They have no intention of going to Baghdad right now, but they are a blocking force, not just a blocking force for troops coming down from Baghdad, but they can block a retreat anytime they like. Tom? John Cochran, what's the reaction at the White House from a political point of view? Is President Bush prepared to accept this? Uh, he is not prepared to accept this. First, let me say that there are intelligence reports indicating that, in fact, the Iraqi tanks are headed north. The problem is, on their way to the Iraqi border to get through Kuwait, they've got to go past American positions. They're very concerned within the administration what will happen when those Iraqi tanks, even if they are trying to retreat, and it's not sure why they're headed north, but you'd think they're headed north if they're retreating, what happens when they run across those American forces? So we will continue to attack them because we don't want these people, obviously, to have their, uh, their firepower when they run across the American troops. President Bush received word of this news that the Iraqis uh, were going to withdraw, or said they would withdraw, this word from Baghdad radio. He received it on Capitol Hill where he was engaged in a game of paddle ball. This was just about a half an hour ago. Short time ago, however, Bush's spokesman Marlon Fitzwater said, we have not received news of the Iraqi withdrawal from an authoritative source. Therefore, the war goes on. John Cochran, do they see this as another card for the Soviet Union? Gorbachev has been trying hard to keep his Soviet peace plan alive even going to the United Nations. Well, the Soviets were up to their elbows this afternoon. They again were trying to advance a new peace initiative, some of the details of which are unclear. The Soviets were talking about reaching a new date for withdrawal. Part of the problem is the White House is saying that the way that the Iraqis should retreat is to have this announced at the UN, that the Iraqi ambassador to the UN should make the announcement, should inform the UN Security Council. However, we're not sure that the Iraqi ambassador has communications to Baghdad, Tom. Right. It's not clear he could announce that if he wanted to. And Fred Francis of the yeah. Pentagon, final thoughts before we yes. move along here? Tom, uh, Baghdad has almost no communications with its troops in the field. Today, U.S. intelligence intercepted communications from Iraqi commanders pleading with Baghdad to allow them to retreat. The communication said at least seven Iraqi divisions could no longer fight. So that was in the clear, picked up by U.S. officials. So indeed, the Iraqi army is in terrible shape. Tom? Thank you, Fred Francis and John Cochran. We'll be coming back to both of you as we uh, proceed with this extraordinary evening of developments here in the Persian Gulf. About five hours before that announcement on Baghdad radio, there was a Scud missile alert here in Dahran, Saudi Arabia. Then the all clear was sounded. We thought that the Patriot missiles had once again had executed a successful intercept, but that was not the case. The Scud missile fell on an army barracks that contained army reservists. We do not know the unit exactly, but this is what happened. 12 killed, 40 still missing tonight. 
The missile's warhead, or debris, slammed into the barracks as troops were sitting down to dinner. The whole thing's gone. Everybody in it is either wounded or dead. How many people were inside? About 130, maybe. There's 53 for sure. That was my unit. They're gone. That was a survivor of tonight's Scud missile attack, the first ever to successfully hit an American target. One of these ambulances has to go up there. Oh, the people are up here. About 150 men and women, members of a U.S. military transport company, were living in this former warehouse on the east side of Daharan. An eyewitness said the victims had no warning. Uh, speed seconds and look. Dozens of ambulances, Saudi and American, rushed to the scene. Rescue workers pulled the injured from the wreckage, but some were beyond help. The twisted framework of the warehouse seemed to indicate the warhead scored a direct hit. Hours after the flames were out, emergency teams continued to pick through the debris for more victims. The search is expected to last through the night. There were 12 killed and at least 40 more are missing. And in the ground war, in two days of fighting, so far, only four Americans have been killed in action in all of that. These people thought that they were safely out of harm's way. Before the Scud attack, the American commanders from Operation Desert Storm were restrained, but clearly very optimistic about the progress that they are making so far. General Walter Boomer, who is the Marine boss in this theater, said it's not over until it's over, but he predicted that it would be over in a matter of days, not weeks. Vast stretches of the Iraqi and Kuwaiti desert now belong to the Allied forces. U.S. and French troops west of Kuwait moved deeply into Iraq under the protective cover of steady artillery fire. Armor from the 1st Cavalry raced into position to help cut off Saddam Hussein's Republican Guard. In the first two days, the assault has been so successful, the greatest problem for the Allies are prisoners, more than 20,000 altogether. These were Saddam's cannon fodder, the green troops on the front lines. This is how they had been living, in crude, disheveled bunkers. There's a certain element of um, sympathy for them because they're so poorly equipped and the way their, their well-being, you know, they're human beings also, and we're treating them as such, taking as good a care as we can of them. Those who surrendered were lucky. Many of their Iraqi brothers were killed, and the Army is preparing for thousands more enemy dead. We'll have to, uh, have to get approval from, uh, from uh, the theater commander in order to open a mass grave, but uh, in my opinion, that would be the best way to handle it. As the Allies shell at will, more Allied forces and supplies continue to pour into the war zone. Even those areas that have been secured remain dangerous, however. Active landmines are just off the cleared roadway. And the air over Kuwait is thick with the smoke of battle and burning oil wells, making air support difficult today. American pilots wonder when Saddam Hussein will get the message. You can bomb him, bomb him until the cows come home, but until you park your tank on his front lawn, you won't really convince him he's lost the war. Ground commanders hope that won't be necessary, but American forces are in place just in case. Just five minutes with Just for Men. The same medicine found in the prescription drug Motrin. Same as in Motrin in non-prescription strength. If you want the same medicine found in prescription Motrin, wouldn't it just be simpler to ask for Motrin IB? Non-prescription strength Motrin IB. Accept no alternatives. We bake pearls made of denture material in this blueberry pie to prove how powerfully Efferdent, America's leading denture cleanser, removes this tough stain. Even in between, Efferdent, stronger than stains. Before the ground combat began, there was a lot of talk about the fog of combat. But for the Allied forces, they are moving so swiftly and so easily to their objectives, that fog has not developed. There's only a clear road ahead. NBC's Arthur Kent is one of the journalists assigned to the combat journalism pools. Rocket batteries fire on distant Iraqi positions, while self-propelled guns pound bunkers just ahead of this armored battalion's rapid advance. This is the first cavalry on the move well north of the Saudi border. Charlie Company of the 1st Battalion, 5th Regiment, the Black Knights, presses right up to the Iraqis' collapsing defensive lines. U.S. shells strike home just ahead of Charlie Company's Bradley armored troop carriers, 
blasting Iraqi bunkers, making certain no opposing troops remain. M1A1 tanks maneuver forward. The 1st Cavalry's armored infantry spreads wide and continues the advance. With attack channels cleared through Iraqi minefields, Charlie Company's vehicles move up, constantly listening by radio for word of what their enemy's troops and tanks are doing on the horizon. The battalion has held up just short of this burning slit trench, this Iraqi defensive work which has been set alight by A-10 ground attack planes and by long-range artillery. The battalion does not wish to proceed beyond there. There is uh, said to be an Iraqi mechanized unit and dismounted infantry, infantry in the open, only two kilometers ahead of us from this position. Once the oil in the trench burns off, the obstacle must be bridged to allow the assault force to cross. Iraqi counterfire has been irregular here, although one of these Apache gunships brought forward to cover the advance has been shot down. Its crew, however, was rescued. The operation, say commanders here, will continue. With the 1st Cavalry, Arthur Kent, NBC News, beyond the Saudi border. Now to my colleague Jane Pauley in New York with more news about this war. Jane? Thank you, Tom. Before the Baghdad radio announcement that Saddam Hussein was ready to withdraw his forces from Kuwait, the people of the Iraqi capital were getting a very different story about how the war was progressing. Iraqi military communiques claimed coalition forces fled from the battlefield in utter retreat and that there was no truth to reports of Iraqi prisoners by the thousands. NBC's Tom Aspel is in Baghdad. His report was monitored by Iraqi censors. Thick cloud cover didn't prevent Allied warplanes from attacking Baghdad again tonight. Iraqi anti-aircraft gunners opened up with cannons, reaching for an enemy they could neither see nor hear. The ground war has most people's attention now. Today, Iraqis were told their troops are counter-attacking. The news prompted some to fire in the air in celebration. In a battle lasting eight hours, the communique said, Iraqi forces destroyed many tanks and pushed the Allied troops back. Communique 63, issued tonight, says Iraqi troops have recaptured all ground lost to the Allies since Sunday. The communiques broadcast to the people on Baghdad radio lifted spirits here, however temporarily. The radio station, the main source of information here, seems to have gained new credibility lately. There has been no mention of the large number of Iraqi prisoners the Allies claim to have captured since the beginning of the land battle. But one newspaper, Al Thawra, carried an item this morning encouraging Iraqi soldiers to stand and fight. The only way for a great and steadfast Iraq is military honor and a strong will, it said. The Iraqis have great faith in their forces in this land battle, not so much to keep Kuwait, but to defend Iraq itself from foreign invaders. Jane? Tom, do the people believe their uh, forces can actually push the coalition back? Well, I don't think at this stage that many of them think that they have much of a chance against the technological superiority of the Allied forces in Kuwait. But should the foreign forces enter southern Iraq, then I think we're in for a different story. The Iraqis would feel then that they are defending their homeland, and that would be quite a different matter in spite of all the technology lined up against them. I think they'd fight very hard indeed to defend their own country. Thank you, Tom. Tom Aspel in Baghdad. In a moment, how the Iraqi troops have been surrounded. Ask me what counts most after 40 years in the car business, and I don't have to think twice. One, the minivans. We invented them. Two, driver's airbags in every car we build in this country. What do we do for an encore? Put them together. Minivans with a driver's side airbag. Nobody else is doing it. You still have to use your seatbelt with a minivan airbag, but it will save lives. A lot of lives. Theragran wants to know. Changed my life. Not much. With Theragram M, multivitamins with minerals, fine-tuned for the way you live. 
I'm sorry to bother you, but I'm having a dinner party and I've run out of coffee. Come in. Thank you. Would uh, Taster's Choice be too good for your guests? Oh, I uh, think they could get used to it. Could they? Yes. Savor the sophisticated taste of Taster's Choice. Have you met your new neighbor yet? Oh, I've uh, popped in for coffee. Hey, gorgeous. Oh, come on. House for outs. Can you mix a bowl of cereal with more vitamin and mineral nutrition than total? Sure I can. Sure I can. There. And then we'll have some of this. Not enough calcium. Okay, wait a minute. I'll add some of this one. Now there's not enough iron. Hey, you're interrupting me. You know a bowl of all those put together can't top an equal amount of total. One serving of whole grain total has 100% of 12 essential vitamins and minerals. For all this nutrition, nothing can top total. Nothing. You're kidding. Late word from uh, Baghdad Radio once again tonight. Foreign Minister Tariq Aziz apparently contacted the Soviet ambassador in Baghdad and asked him to convey to Soviet President Mikhail Gorbachev Saddam Hussein's desire now to withdraw his forces from Kuwait under the Soviet peace plan. That has been roundly rejected, of course, by President Bush and by Allied commanders here. Fred Francis reports from the Pentagon now that even before that announcement from Saddam Hussein tonight, he had many more problems on the battlefield than what we could see. Fred, what's the latest there? Well, he sure did, Tom. Allied forces are inside 150 miles from Baghdad and no advances planned on the capital, but the Allies are now in a position all across southern Iraq to block any retreat. And tonight, the most decisive battle of the war is being fought on the Kuwaiti-Iraqi border against Republican Guard tank divisions. Pentagon officials say the early reports from desert fighting in that battle and other fronts were very encouraging. Earlier today, American commanders said they had destroyed 270 Iraqi tanks, 35 of them from the Republican Guards. General Richard Neal reported other battlefield triumphs. During the late morning and early afternoon today, Marines engaged an armor mech force destroying 50 to 60 tanks. Army, an Army armor brigade operating with Marine forces engaged another armor mech unit consisting of over 150 vehicles. American, British, and French armored columns from at least two Saudi staging areas have now reached key positions in Iraq. American and French paratroopers are a blocking force just 150 miles southwest of Baghdad to counter an Iraqi tank division at Karbala. Another division is southwest of Najiv, again deep in Iraq. Closer to Kuwait, a third major unit has joined American Rangers at Nazaria, a critical resupply crossroads on the Euphrates River. Other Allied units will hook south soon to attack into Kuwait from the north. And finally, an Allied tank army is tonight confronting the Republican guards from the west. The guns of the Army's 24th Mechanized Infantry and other units, according to Pentagon sources, may decide within the next 24 hours how quickly the war will end. Not everything has been wildly successful. These slow-moving American vehicles are reportedly being delayed by what a Pentagon official described as less than aggressive Arab forces. The Arab forces are only a few miles south of Kuwait City and should have entered today. All other thrusts into Kuwait are fast-paced. Only one has met stiff resistance from an Iraqi army unit held in reserve. But those Iraqi units held in reserve are being attacked by Allied aircraft as soon as they try to form up in battle formation. Today, Allied forces flew more than 500 close air support missions. Tom? And they did quite well, Fred, even though there was a fair amount of cloud cover here today as well, based on the talks that I had with some of the pilots in this area. Walter Boomer, who is a Marine general in command of the Marines in this area, said it will be over in a matter of days, not weeks. Did he mean by the end of this week? Yes, he did, Tom. As, as you well know, there has been no Marine amphibious landing, and there may not be a battle amphibious landing. It's going so well, Tom, they're probably a day or two ahead of schedule. And for once, all U.S. intelligence reports that have fed into this thing for the last couple weeks have been right that this would be a very short war with very low casualties. Tom? Thank you, Fred Francis of the Pentagon. The last official report, only four killed in action so far in the war but 12 killed in the Scud missile attack. Back. On the road, the Infinity Q45 becomes a living, breathing thing. You feel it work the wind and seize the road. Feel the embrace of leather and luxury. The 
rarity of a 278 horsepower V8 engine that was born to run. And begin to understand why Road and Track has named it one of the 10 best cars in the world. Grandma cleaned her dentures with toothpaste. Mom soaked hers with tablets. But I used the denture cleanser of the 90s. Powerful, fast-acting denture foam. The deep cleaning of a tablet, the speed of a toothpaste. Just spray it on. In seconds, denture foam expands, reaching deep down to loosen even stubborn food stains so you can quickly brush and rinse your dentures sparkling clean. Total time, just one minute. It even has minty mouthwash ingredients. Get new denture foam. The deep cleaning of a tablet, the speed of a toothpaste. Send up a cross foot. Give me an F check. There's a place in the friendly skies where not everyone's so friendly. Stop. Hold it. 93 hours minimum. Check it out. Over 9,000 mechanics of United Airlines work Give here. Give me a mini grinder. They're picky, fussy, stubborn. But if you fly, they're the best friends you'll ever have. United, rededicated to giving you the service okay. you deserve. Come fly the friendly skies. Eating the right foods can fill you with painful gas. That's why you may need Gas-X for fast gas pain relief. Relief antacids can't give you. So eat right and feel right with Gas-X. How do I know where to get my brakes done right? Come to Midas. You get a lot of value for the price, plus peace of mind. Knowing the job will be done right. That's why more people come to us for brakes, knowing that nobody beats Midas. Nobody. In Kuwait, the world's richest oil fields are battlefields. Wells by the hundreds have been destroyed and set ablaze. Millions of gallons of oil have been dumped into the Persian Gulf. And yet, gasoline prices are dropping. NBC's chief financial correspondent, Mike Jensen, explains why. At this station in Los Angeles, gasoline is down to 87.9 cents a gallon. I love it. I mean, it's terrific. I hope it stays this way. All over America, gas prices are plunging. If it weren't for the higher federal excise tax, gas would be cheaper now than it was before the war. That's because crude oil prices have been falling, and that worries OPEC. Six non-Arab OPEC ministers met today in Vienna. They want to jack prices up, but they're not likely to succeed, even with this happening in Kuwait. As of 1300 this afternoon, we can confirm over 600 fires burning. Of these, at least 517 are wellheads. Kuwait is a huge oil producer, so is Iraq. But the world has gotten along for months without their oil. Because Saudi Arabia and others are pumping a lot more oil than usual. And because demand is down with the U.S. recession. The oil glut will get even bigger when Red Adair, the oil well firefighter, starts putting out the fires in Kuwait. He just signed a contract with Kuwait to send in two teams as soon as it's safe. But it's going to take a couple of years at least to do all of this. Meantime, falling gas prices bode well for the U.S. economy. Motorists have more money for other things. Even if it's only $50 a month, if they don't do a lot of driving, or $150 a month if they do a lot of driving, it's money in their pocket. That buying power is exactly what the U.S. economy needs to help it out of the recession. Some economists say the worst is already behind us. Mike Jensen, NBC News, New York. On Wall Street today, the market closed down slightly after a day of wild swings and heavy trading. The financial report has been brought to you by Merrill Lynch. We're bullish on the future. In the midst of the storm, it's only natural to wonder where the future will lead. who worry about the winds of change today, we'd like to remind you that no adversity lasts forever. And we'll be there with the strength and resources you can count on. Because at Merrill Lynch, we're bullish on the future. minivans are still first. 
Ziploc presents Fingerman. Hi, I'm here to demonstrate an amazing achievement. Introducing the new Gripper Zipper from Ziploc. Now the easiest closing bag there is. In fact, I can even close it with my hands tied behind my back. Yes, the zipper is grabbing hold. It's locking. Feel it close the first time, every time. Ziploc bags with the new Gripper Zipper. <clears throat> the easiest closing bag there is. Very good, Finger Man. You gonna untie me now? Hey, hey, where are you going? New Alpine Lace American Slices. Tastes so good. Low cholesterol and 50% less sodium. Okay. Two-thirds less saturated fat. Healthy and tasty American taste so good. If your doctor has recommended Metamucil and you like the results, but you don't like those glasses of thick liquid, change to FiberCon. Get the same fiber action in easy-to-swallow tablets. Get doctor-recommended FiberCon. One of the biggest problems for the Allies in Operation Desert Storm are the thousands and thousands of Iraqis who are surrendering. They have to be bathed and fed and clothed and deloused and put somewhere here in Saudi Arabia. And we see Jamie Gangel tonight on the military plans for them. The long line of surrender. For many of these Iraqi soldiers, the march to Saudi Arabia and POW camps is a relief, an end to 40 days of pounding. But for the Allies, it represents a new problem on the battlefield. In two days, more than 18,000 Iraqis have been captured. Not a surprise, but at times overwhelming. Across the front, coalition forces continue to capture large numbers of enemy prisoners of war. In some cases, entire battalions at a time. To help process POWs on the battlefield and in the rear, record numbers of military police, more than 10,000. 6,500 of them reserves called up for the first time. The Allies say the ground war has not been delayed by the prisoners, but temporary camps have had to be set up at the front. Yes, we have uh, in theatre and moving up with our troops three prison of war guard, three prison of war battalions. That is, battalions to take back prisoners of war. Uh, it is set out in such a way that we can take them from the front, shuffle them back down the line through brigade collecting points into a divisional prison of war cage. So we're pretty well organized on that score. Pentagon officials say the Allies have been planning for as many as 200,000 POWs. Early reports are the Iraqis have been easy prisoners, relieved to know they will be fed and decently cared for. But with wholesale surrenders, it will be a while, officials can't or won't say how long, before the POWs reach the official camps in Saudi Arabia. They will be kept there until the war is over, when they will be sent back to Iraq. As one Pentagon official acknowledged, suddenly having tens of thousands of prisoners certainly is a problem. But he said, if you have your choice of problems, this is one you take. Jamie Gangel, NBC News, the Pentagon. Jane, that's Nightly News up to the minute. You and I will be part of the continuing coverage of Around the Clock on America Goes to War on this NBC station. KKK plays more and better music. Kick plays 12 back-to-back -back so I can listen all day long. Hey, KKK, Kick 96 FM. I love it. It's hard to believe, but contestants in this game show actually earn points by stripping off their clothes. And on the next Entertainment Tonight, we've got the inside story on the sexiest TV show the world has ever seen. It's an incredible hit in Italy, Germany, and Spain. And now France, and yes, the good old U.S. of A. are trying to import this unbelievably hot property. The game show where you win by taking it all off. Only on the next Entertainment Tonight. Tonight at 6.30 on Channel 2. What? Still putting off joining Pilgrim Cleaners Frequent Cleaning Club? Join today and join thousands of Houstonians who are saving money. It's easy and fast. Fill up a card and get $5 free. But you can't save if you don't join. So stop by Pilgrim today and start saving on quality cleaning since 1927. Pilgrim Cleaners. If you can't find a Pilgrim in 10 minutes, you're lost. KPRC TV, Channel 2, Houston's 24 hour news channel. Now, Channel 2 News at 6. With Ron Stone, Doug Johnson, Craig Roberts, and the Channel 2 News Team. 
The most devastating Scud missile attack of the Gulf War has left 12 Americans dead, 25 wounded, and 40 missing in Saudi Arabia. And as the American offensive continues against Iraq, Baghdad Radio reports tonight that Saddam Hussein has ordered his troops out of Kuwait. Good evening. Ron Stone has the evening off. We want to go right to Washington now for the very latest on that report of the Iraqi withdrawal offer. Tim Lake is joining us from our Channel 2 News Washington Bureau. Tim? Well, Bill, from the White House tonight, they're saying that there's been no contact with the U.S. government by the Iraqis and no authoritative contact with the U.N. So the Iraqis, in making that announcement on Baghdad Radio, are certainly not going through the formal channels. Congressman Tom DeLay with us now tonight. What are you reading to this? You think it's a smokescreen? Do they really mean it? No, Tim. I think Saddam Hussein realizes that his army is defeated and he's trying to put the best face that he can on it. But he doesn't realize that this just isn't the way you do things. If he wants to give up and withdraw from Kuwait, he needs to inform the UN that he's going to do so and withdraw his troops. Actions speak louder than words. Allied commanders have said the Iraqis will not find refuge in Iraq. Do you think the Allied uh, forces should just keep pushing on? I think we've got to keep pushing on until the army either gives up or, or starts to moving north. Okay, I think uh, public opinion... What every woman should know about breast cancer, tonight on Nightcast. On the second day of the ground war, Saddam Hussein orders a withdrawal of his troops, but first he gets revenge. Twelve Americans killed, 40 are missing in a Scud missile attack. This is NBC Nightly News with Tom Brokaw. Tonight, America at war. Reporting from Saudi Arabia, Tom Brokaw with Jane Pauley in New York. Good evening from Saudi Arabia. It is a night of desperation from Baghdad, a night of triumph for Operation Desert Storm in Kuwait and Iraq. And here in Saudi Arabia, it is a night of tragedy for 12 American Army reservists killed in the coastal city, Tom. The, uh, the Iraqi tanks came in with their turrets turned backwards, the, the universal signal uh, for, for withdrawal or retreat or surrender. And uh, they turned around and fired. So any tanks moving north are going to move north into more than 100,000 American and Allied troops because that is roughly the number which is take, who have taken up positions in southern Iraq. As a matter of fact, Tom, American and Allied troops are within 150 miles of Baghdad. They have no intention of going to Baghdad right now, but they are a blocking force, not just a blocking force for troops coming down from Baghdad, but they can block a retreat anytime they like. Tom? John Cochran, what's the reaction? Paddle ball. This was just about a half an hour ago. Short time ago, however, Bush's spokesman, Marlon Fitzwater, said, we have not received news of the Iraqi right, withdrawal from an authoritative source. Therefore, the war goes on. John Cochran, do they see this as another card for the Soviet Union? Gorbachev has been trying hard to keep his Soviet peace plan alive, even going to the United Nations. Well, the Soviets were up to their elbows this afternoon. They, again, were trying to advance a new peace initiative, some of the details of which are unclear. The Soviets were talking about reaching a new date for withdrawal. Part of the problem is the White House is saying that the way that the Iraqis should retreat is to have this announced at the U.N., that the Iraqi ambassador to the... ...action at the White House from a political point of view. Is President Bush prepared to accept this? Uh, he is not prepared to accept this. First, let me say that there are intelligence reports indicating that, in fact, the Iraqi tanks are headed north. The problem is on their way to the Iraqi border to get through Kuwait, they've got to go past American positions. They're very concerned within the administration what will happen when those Iraqi tanks, even if they are trying to retreat, and it's not sure why they're headed north, but you'd think if they're headed north that they're retreating, what happens when they run across those American forces? So we will continue to attack them because we don't want these people, obviously, to have their, uh, their firepower when they run across the American troops. President Bush received word of this news that the Iraqis uh, were going to withdraw, or said they would withdraw, this word from back Baghdad radio. He received it on Capitol Hill where he was engaged in a game of a Scud missile attack and 40 others are missing. That Scud missile attack came about five hours before Saddam Hussein announced on Baghdad radio that he was prepared to withdraw his troops from Kuwait under the provisions of the Soviet peace plan. Will that fly with the American military command and with President Bush? Standing by now at the White House, NBC's John Cochran at the Pentagon, Fred Francis. Fred, if they begin the withdrawal, will they have safe passage? No, they will not have safe passage, Tom. Under previously uh, dictated policy by this administration, they have to leave their equipment in place at this point if they want to withdraw. One senior official told NBC News a short time ago, remember Kafchi. In Kafchi, that battle for...